USS Buenaventura. We are encountering south winds, 140 knots, mountainous seas estimated at up to 50 feet in torrential rains. Miami Monitor Go 5-9 is progressing between feeder bands toward Fitter Key. We advise that we have observed flight level winds of 155 knots. We are estimating the eye at 1825 Zulu. Over. Go 5-9, Miami Monitor. Copied all. Over. Weather, this is drop. Approaching the storm. Coordinates are 30 decimal 3 north, longitude 87 decimal 5 west, ETA 1825 Zulu. Drop weather. Be ready to drop at 1825 Zulu. We are in the eye. Request permission to drop, sir. Pilot to weather. Everything clear on radar. Roger. Drop weather. Release now. Instrument out. Receiving good signal. Miami weather monitor, Gulf 5 9. direction of Hurricane Ella has now become less stable and more unpredictable, this is one of the most devastating storms to come along in years. At this time, estimates of damage already inflicted by Hurricane Ella are running into the millions. Power failures have been reported in several cities along the west coast of Florida. Tidal surges are reported everywhere. Even as I bring you this bulletin, there are no communications at all into the Athens area, while Fiddler Key and its companion offshore islands are reported to be under 15 feet of water and are being battered by 130 mile an hour winds. The National Hurricane Center in Miami reports a massive evacuation has been underway with assistance from the county sheriff's department. Efforts have been severely hampered by high winds and rising floods. Several causeways are jammed with people trying to escape from the Keys. Palm trees and debris are blowing everywhere, knocking in store windows and creating dangerous conditions for motorists trying to find shelter. Piers and marinas are collapsing one after another as waves continue to pound the coast. We can only hope that this devastating hurricane has reached its peak. Sunny Florida, Sam. God, I'm glad you're here. So how you doing? Fine, fine. You? I'm squeezing by. You know me. Good. My car's outside. Come on. Mr. Harrison? <laughs> Might need this. I got you. Thanks for a nice, smooth flight, Charlie. My pleasure. Take care now. All right, we'll see you again. God, it's good to see you. Now tell me how Carrie's doing. Well, she's still alive, thank God. That's about it. It's been two weeks since the stroke. Still no change. Well, what'd the doctor say? That it's still too early to tell. You remember how vital, how alive she used to be. Yeah. Well, she can't talk and she can't move. Well, I came as soon as I heard the news. I don't know why in the hell you didn't send me a wire. If I'd run into old Jake Scott down there in that bar in Jakarta, I'd never know nothing was wrong. Well, I should have. I'm sorry I was underwater. She's really gonna be happy to see you. Well, let's go see her. Look, I'll take you over and see our nest first. You get cleaned up. She's still in intensive care, and they're pretty hard-nosed about visiting hours. Right? Home. 
impressive. Not exactly in the class with the pyramids, but close. As soon as I get you settled, I've got to go to a meeting. What kind of a meeting? Oh, homeowners association. I'm on the board. You? A joiner? Yeah, it's a matter of protecting my investment. How do you mean? Management fees, maintenance costs, heavy assessments. I thought I ought to know who was spending how much on what and why. That sounds reasonable, but why would you have to join the board for that? Well, you've never lived in a condo. The owners run the association, and it's a real zoo. The way they act, God knows how some of them ever made money enough to retire here in the first place. <laughs> well, it sounds to me like retirement really doesn't fit you. I'll tell you, I've learned some very important things here in the last several months. Such as? Retirement is an activity which is suitable only for the very young. Hello, Mrs. Conlaw. How are you? Just fine, thank you. Oh, Mr. Garver. Yes? Uh, well, I don't want to be a nuisance, but it's the hold button. The hold button? Yes, in the elevators. You see, certain people press it to keep the door open so they get their shopping in and out. And then they forget to release it, and some of us are left upstairs. And we either have to wait an hour, or we have to walk down the stairs. And, well, it just isn't fair. No, uh, you're quite right. I understand, Mrs. Connell. I've had to wait myself several times. Then you'll do something about it? I'll sure try, Mrs. Connell. Thank you, Mr. Garver. <laughs> Don't laugh. You take your first shower in that fountain out there. Bye. has been running now for a whole 20 minutes. 20. So? It isn't exactly one what would call uh, hot, is it? I mean, warm maybe, but hot, no. So? <laughs> so, when one buys a condominium for the price of this one, a building that claims to have hot water, isn't it reasonable that one should expect to get hot water? And if you give me that so, one more time, I will not be responsible for what will happen to you. Mrs. Churchbridge. If you don't wipe that stupid smile off your face, you sporca miseria, faccia bruta, mentecato, stupidaccio. So, what are you going to do about it? <coughs> about what? Oh, sporca miseria, about the hot water that never gets hot. Well, there's nothing I can do, Mrs. C. What do you mean, huh? Well, whether you have hot water or not has nothing to do with me. You'll have to take it up with your owner's association. For why? Aren't you the manager? Of course. Of course. Then my husband and I, don't we help pay for your salary? No, ma'am. You pay for management. They pay my salary. And this management pays you to keep the owners happy here. Isn't that right? Well, not so as you notice. I mean, I don't work for you people. I work for Gulfway Management. And Gulfway's got a 20-year contract to manage this place whether you like it or not. And Gulfway's the people I gotta please. And Gulfway has to please us. Otherwise, what do we pay them for? Don't ask me. I just work here. And there's no use getting uptight about it, Mrs. C. All you rich people can't do anything about me or my wife. We know you hate us. Like us to quit, too, but we ain't gonna. And if you don't like it, you can go to hell. Ah! Put them up. Put them up, you chicken. Put it up. Right now. Put them up. Julia. Yeah? I think you better leave. Before my sweet wife forgets her rather aristocratic upbringing and does you some bodily harm. Sure thing, Mr. C. I'm on my way. You lo mazzo, Enrique, huh? You lo mazzo. Hm. I'm glad you think this is funny. Not funny, my love. Just not worth getting upset about. Dinner. Making a service call, Julian? Chief, you still make a mean drink. Thanks. 
Well, what do you think, Sam? Well, I think the little lady's got you tamed down. Oh, you mean the decor? Yeah, I guess it is more hers than mine. Then I owed it to her. You know, Sam, when you knock around the world the way we do, building things in one godforsaken place after another, it's really no life for a woman. I guess you're right. And then after a while, you figure, enough's enough. You owe her some. She really likes it here? Oh, she loves it. She loves everything about it. She, she was so happy. Easy, huh? Oh, yeah, you know, it took us four months to find this place. We explored the whole coast, almost inch by inch, then it took her another month to get everything just exactly right. You should have seen her bargain hunting, haggling over drapes, and pictures, and lampshades. And she'd no sooner got it finished right down to the last ashtray when, uh, when it happened. It's funny, isn't it? She's gonna be fine. You just gotta believe it. Yeah, I know. You're right. I guess I've just been alone too much these last few weeks. I'm glad you're here, Sam. I am too. Hey, I'm gonna be late. I thought you said your meeting wasn't for another half hour. But it's a board meeting. Why don't you get cleaned up and come in for the full meeting? I promise you, it'll be worth it. You got a board meeting first. Well, I can't wait to drop this on a few of your buddies. When well, you go ahead and laugh, your time will come. I'll see you. Yes, Mr. Garvers, he invited me to sit in. Oh, I don't know. This is a meeting of the owner's association. Well, I wouldn't worry about it. I have top secret clearance from the Department of Defense. It'll be okay. Delegate Doris, this whole thing is a stupid waste of time. Please, Fred. Mr. and Mrs. Bran. Recording who has checks. Why? You think we're going to walk off with him or something? Of course not. It's just an official record. And stop acting like some shrimp sized quartermaster. You don't have to be so rude. Give me them chairs. Frank, please. Shut up, Doug. I happen to be the sergeant at arms. Listen, Brown Palmer, it's a peasant. Him, I do not like. Join the club, Mrs. Churchbridge. I have. It's only because he feels out of place here. It's because he is out of place, Thelma. People like him belong in trailer camps. Trailer camps? Not very democratic of you, Mr. Nesmacott. Democratic? Why, I've been a registered Republican all my life. Started yet, Thelma? Extinguish the cigarette, Mr. Manson Carter. The rules prohibit smoking at the meeting. It's a stupid rule. Uh, either extinguish the cigarette or uh, leave the room. Hey, will you get off his case, you damn toy soldier? Who the hell are you to be giving us orders? Please. Shut up, Doris. Pete, let's get this thing going before it gets out of hand. Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? May I have your attention, please? May I have your attention, please? Quiet, everyone! Quiet, please. Thank you. I now call this meeting of the Silver Sands Condominium Association to order. As you know, this is a special meeting called to discuss the enormous and unexpected increase in our assessment. Now, this is obviously a very serious matter which affects all of us. Therefore, I will entertain a motion that we dispense with the usual procedure of reading of the minutes of the last meeting at this time. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Good. Now, 
Now, let us proceed to the now, matter. just one damn minute here. Mr. Branhammer, will you please sit down? You're out of order. Are you saying we, we ain't gonna talk about none of that stuff you and the educated brains put in the minutes? What are you guys trying to cover up? We're not trying to cover up anything, Mr. Branhammer. What you're referring to goes under the heading of old business, which will be discussed at our next regular meeting. Now, will you please sit down? Now, look. Oh, Frank, please stop. Shut up, though. Oh, knock it off, Branhammer. We're here to discuss well, something. Well, let's discuss something. All right, get up. Will you shut up with that thing? Pay attention. These uh, figures are rather disturbing. To all of us, Mr. Churchbridge. Yeah, well, then, why did you guys on the board let this happen? We guys didn't let this happen. As you all know, the first board was controlled by the developers headed by Mr. Liss. They negotiated the maintenance and service contracts before they withdrew and before we took control. Which means that uh, we're stuck with these deals. That's about it. Thanks to you guys, it's going to cost all of us maybe three times more than they told us it would when, when we bought in here. Leave out the thanks to you guys, you got it. We elected you to run this place for us. And this is what happens. Look, we are all in the same boat. Huh. Is that supposed to make us feel better? We may all be in the same boat, but who cut the hole in the bottom, you stupid jerk? Look, I don't have to let this happen to me. I don't let this happen to me anytime, anywhere, by anybody. I've had it with you people. I resign. Now have yourself a nice meeting. Oh, 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 oh. Look, oh, hold it, hold it. Just calm down. Relax till I get back. Pete! figures very carefully. Buddy, you can stick those figures. I'm Sergeant at Arms, and you'll have to watch your language, or I'm gonna... Oh, what? Or I'm gonna have to escort you out of here. Escort me? Yes. Ah, you're gonna escort yes. me? Oh, Frank, please stop me. Hey, oh, all right. Yeah. Hey, 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 Sit down. Uh, crying out loud. Yeah. Folks, I'm, uh... I'm sorry I wasn't able to uh, persuade Pete McGinnity to change his mind. But I can't really blame him that much. Being on this board is a miserable, thankless job. However, until the board elects another chairman, I'll do my best to fill in for Pete, at least for this meeting. Here, here. Thank you. Now, I have a suggestion that might save us a lot of time and argument. This increase that we're facing in our assessment um, before we try to figure out how to pay it, why don't we find out if we have to pay it? Um, what choice do we have? Uh, she's right. Legally, we have to pay it. It says so in the sales contract. Owners are responsible for all assessments. Yes, but I'm not arguing with the contract. All I'm suggesting is that we, the board, that is, uh, go and have a talk with Mr. Liss. What good will that do? I believe that Mr. Liss, as a developer, deliberately underestimated our monthly overhead in order to make the units more saleable. Now, if we can convince him that uh, we're on to him, that we're not going to pay it without a fight, he might absorb some of our costs. After all, he and the bank that holds the mortgage on this building, they can't really cope with all of us refusing to pay anything at all. Oh, that, that would be highly irregular. Yeah, it could get us all evicted, too. Oh, now, how evicted? What are they going to do with all these apartments if they evicted everybody? <laughs> Right now, I'd like to entertain a motion. I'd like to recommend... Did you have a question, Mr. Conlon? Well, I don't want to be a nuisance. No, that's all right. Go right ahead. Well, it's the heater. The heater? Yeah, for the swimming pool. You see, if we turn the heater down in the wintertime, it would not only save on our gas bill, but wear and tear on the pool as well. Because, you see, if the water is cooler, less people will be using it. Why, well, you crazy old bat, what has that got to do with that? Frank, Brownheimer, knock it off, will you? You're absolutely right, Mrs. Conlaw. Uh, turning down the heater a few notches would save on our gas bills. As a matter of fact, why don't you bring that up at our next regular meeting, and we'll see if we can do something about it. Thank you, Mr. Garber. All right. Now, uh... To get on with it, I'd like to entertain a motion that the board make an appointment to see Mr. Liss as soon as possible. So move. Second. All right. All in favor, raise your hand. And remember, only one vote to an apartment. Well, we don't have
have to count heads on that one, all right? Motion is carried. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Yeah, so move. I got a tennis date. I'm late for All in favor? All right. Bring your chairs. Bring your chairs, everybody. Uh, please, would you please all bring your chairs? Uh, please bring your chairs to the back of the room. Very interesting. Very interesting, just like you promised. Don't say a word. Don't say a word. I know what I'm letting myself in for, Sam. But you take this meeting. We've got a crisis, and only 20% of the owners even bother to show up. Hey, I'm not trying to give you a hard time. Besides, you're too old for a babysitter anyway. You're right. Let's grab some shot and go see Carrie. You got a deal. I'll buy you a drink. Association today. I'm not sure. Something about costs. And I gave them a simply terrific idea. You would have really been proud of me. <laughs> well, you see, I told them that if they would turn the heater down on the pool. Just think, when the Rothschilds started out, they had nothing to work with but couriers on horseback. Very primitive. But effective. And speaking of effective, why are you doing my job instead of resting like you're supposed to? Because I'm bored with resting. And I don't feel exactly great. But I needed something to take my mind off myself for a while. Pain bad? Maybe. Grade two. Want a shot? For a lousy grade two? I'm tougher than that. This is the life. Sun, warmth, peace, quiet. And a beautiful and exciting woman to tend to my every need. What more could a man want? Uh, how'd the meeting go? Perfectly off. McGinnity quits, and poor Gus grabbed the wheel and will probably go down with the ship. Bad as that, huh? Mm, worse. Seems that Mr. Marty List, the genius who built this place, is uh, rather shifty, to say the least. Anyway, it looks as if we're all going to get stuck for triple assessments. Mmm. What'll that come to? About, about seven or eight hundred dollars a month? Give or take. <laughs> well, we can always sell a painting or something. Want to sell the family heirlooms? Well, I don't admire you being snide about it, Lee. Who's being snide? You are. Just because we can afford 10 or 20 or whatever times that amount doesn't do the other owners a whole lot of good. And people like them are living mostly on a fixed income. Now, this increase could really kill them. I see. Kill as in dead, you mean? Don't you dare use that self-pity ploy. Not on me, pal. I'm sorry, it just slipped out. Probably because I'm not fond of being the object of your righteous indignation. Better mad than sad, you once said. I did, didn't I? Yes, you did. <laughs> well, is Gus going to be able to fix things? Oh, I doubt it. All he can do is start an owner's revolt, get everyone to refuse to pay their assessments. Could be very effective. Want to bet? It won't work unless there's total support. All you need are a couple of owners panicking over being evicted, and the whole game plan blows up in his face. Lee, 
Isn't there anything we can do? The trouble with you nouveau riche broads is you want to use that good green money to do in the bad guys. So what's wrong with that? What's wrong with that, my own sweet love, is that when people like us start to play God with other people's lives, it's hard to stop. I may be very rich, darling, but I also like to believe I'm not arrogant about it. Is that bad? You want that shot now? Hi, Mouse. Look who I brought all the way from Indonesia. Hi, pretty lady. I know you don't like housework, but that's about the size of it. I buy her this beautiful new condo with all the fancy time-saving gizmos. Because I won't spring for a maid, she... It was on strike, right? That's right. You see, honey, I told you Sam and C3, your little game. And how? And it's not gonna work. I didn't learn all those fancy disco steps just so you'd flake out on me now. I'm sorry, you must go now. ugly character's gonna be around for a couple of weeks. You can count on that. So I want you to dig out your dancing shoes, you understand, sunshine? You and I got a date. Please, you really must go. as every relative of every patient in this hospital does. If we spent all our time reassuring relatives, we'd never get any work done, would we? Well, now, just a damn minute, Dr. Castor. Now, Mr. Garber, I... we're doing everything we can for her. If you're not satisfied with that, you're always free to take her elsewhere. Now, if you'll excuse me. Dr. Kelly May Station. Dr. Kelly May Station. How the hell do you handle that? I never said it'd be easy, Sam. Or fair. If it was, I wouldn't be facing two weeks of your cooking. Come on. It's been a long time, Gus. Yeah, 20 years, give or take a minute. Yeah. You know, I'm still trying to figure out why you and Carrie take a orphan kid out of an Oklahoma oil field and send him through college with your own money. Why'd you do that? Well, I thought you had a lot going for you, Sam, if it could be developed. What the hell? Everybody makes mistakes. Oh, thanks a lot. <laughs> you know, I swore someday I wanted to be exactly like you. Well, there's your problem. No ambition. Come on. I'm trying to be serious for a change. I mean, here we are 20 years later. I've got no involvements, no relationships. Got a pretty good job. I got more money than I know what to do with. Been all over the world. And I have had some good times. And I plan on having a lot more. You just can't stop needling me, can you? That's right. I mean, here you are, 
my hero, retired too soon, stuck in this place. You got a sick wife. You're all involved with this lousy condo association. But you want to know something? What? I still envy you. You're drunk. I'm not drunk, but I'm working on it. <laughs> I just saved your dog, you could be a little appreciative. Thank you. Oh, well, Duffy can swim like a fish. Oh, he can. Well, then would you mind telling me what you're screaming about? Oh, I just don't like him to go in the water. He's such a mess when he comes out. Well, look, see for yourself. Look at him. Well, I hope the rest of my day goes better than it started. It's nice meeting you both. Hey! Hey! You didn't give me a chance to apologize. Oh, if anybody owes me an apology, it's Duffy. You're rather hostile, aren't you? Oh, usually before breakfast. Now, for example, if you have dinner with me tonight, you notice a big difference. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm not free. How about tomorrow? Oh, no, no, you see, I, I'm married. It's my mistake. I'm sorry. Oh, no, it was a perfectly reasonable offer. Not a, under other circumstances, I would be... Oh, no, Duffy! Would you like me to save him again? Oh, no, Father. He's already as messy as he can get. Well, so am I. Might as well join him. Sophia? Guess again. Raquel. Sorry. Try Barbara. Barbara will do very nicely. <laughs> mm. 
She better. She's all you're getting, friend. Where's Duffy? Stalking in his crate again. How's the market doing? Industrials are up 1.12. Rails up 0.69. Utilities up 1.14. Uh, stocks 101. Trading is steady. Price of gold? Mm. Down. $25. Oh, and Bradhurst in London called. He says that De Beers will have a site ready for him to buy tomorrow. Uh, around the two million mark. Now, he thinks that's a bit steep. Tell him to buy no matter what the price. With an estimated 30 years of digging left, diamonds can only go up. Will do. I'll get breakfast now. Oh, what a terrific day. You and Duffy have a good run this morning? Mm-hmm. You look especially radiant. But maybe something exciting happened. <laughs> At 7 a.m. on the beach? Yes, Mrs. Dodds. I'll have Julian look into it just as soon as he gets in. Yes, I know this is the third time you've called. Yes, it will be taken care of today. Right. Bye. You know, Julian, you better start doing some work around here. The owners are not going to hold still much longer. Well, as long as I got an in with Sully over a golf way, what can they do? Huh? Sully doesn't give a damn whether I give him service or not. Just keep him off my back. Why, so you can just keep working for the ones who pay you on the side? That's right. The sooner they get the message, the more bread we'll be making. Isn't your nurse available today? What you're saying then, Cole, is that it's going to cost me 30% more to build a carbon copy of the Silver Sands project. Huh? That's exactly it, Marty. My costs go up, your price goes up. So if the boys in Miami insist on going ahead, the Harbor Point project will total out of around $20 million. I don't like it. It's too risky. Why? It costs you 30% more, you sell it for 30% more. It comes out even. The problem is, Cole, the buyers of the new condo may not have 30% more to spend. But you already got the land. In a couple of years, it'll cost you 50% more. Well, there's that too in there. Well, it's Miami's decision anyway. Now, don't forget, if we're going to do this thing, we're going to need two permits. One to clear the land and one to do the dredge and fill. Plus getting the density ordinance changed again. No sweat. Denver knows exactly what we need. He says he can slip them through so fast that the environmental nuts will never know what happened. And when they do? There'll be some screaming, the usual stuff. But so what? Cole will have the land cleared off by then, and it'll be too late for them to do anything about it. Yes? Sands Homeowners Committee have arrived. Shall I send them in? All right, you have them wait. I'll be right with them. Yes, sir. Well, you know what I have on my hands? Angry homeowners from the Silver Sands Project to stroke. When I hear something about those permits, I'll let you know. Good enough. See you. Bye, Drew. Bye. They get a load of this, it won't help a whole lot. Oh, how right you are. I think we ought to tape this meeting, too. There might be some threats. You think so? Well, I don't know. Mild ones, maybe. I can't blame them for being so. They've probably read through and seen how low our original figures were. What can they do about it? Well, nothing legally. But a lot of noise right now could hurt that Harbor Point project. So I better do what I can to try to keep them as happy as I can. Well, if you need any help, Doc. You think you can help? Of course, they're men, aren't they? <laughs> Send him in, please. Just to get your motor started. Oh, I like that. Mr. Garver? Well, if it isn't my favorite board members. Hello, Mr. Bliss. <laughs> well, I'm so happy to see you all again. Well, I hope you feel that way when you know why we're here. Oh, why shouldn't I? After all we've been through together? 
I mean, I'm starting to feel like one of the three musketeers. You know, one for all and all for one and... Say, by the way, where is uh, Pete McGinnity? Well, he quit yesterday. But I'm the acting president of the association. I see. Well, come on in. Make yourselves comfortable. Martha. Drew, would you bring in coffee for the folks? Well, this is such nice weather we're having this time of the year. You know, I was just telling Get Drew right this morning... right down to business, Mr. Liss. This is not exactly a social call. Oh, you betcha. But before you do, let me say something. Although I developed Silver Sands, and I'm as proud of it as if it were my own child, I no longer have any legal or financial connection with it whatsoever. However, since it is a dream of mine that came true, I'd gladly advise the board whoever is on it. Very generous of you, Mr. Liss. Marty. Now, come on now. We're all friends, right? Well, if that's the case, perhaps you'd be friendly enough to explain exactly why that original assessment of yours was so far out of line. Mr. Dow here has the figures. Mr. Garber? I'd rather have some answers, Miss Byrne. And you shall have some answers, Mr. Garber. We'll have to go way back. The initial estimate came from the original feasibility study. And at that time, four years ago, Fiddler Key had a density factor of 30 units per acre. But the planning board convinced the county commission to reduce that area to 20 units per acre. Now, with a one-third reduction in allowable occupancy, obviously, remaining units had to pick up the cost. Unfortunately, we never revised the original figures. No, and that was my oversight. I was so busy trying to make sure that the new owners had everything they needed that I completely forgot to revise the assessment, for which I apologize to you. And, of course, the lower figures made the units easier to sell, didn't it? Are we here to make childish accusations, Mr. Garver, or are we here to try to solve a problem? Gus is not making an accusation, Mr. Liss. He's stating a fact. But even the change in the density factor doesn't entirely cover the increase. That's right. Most of it comes from the service and maintenance contracts we're stuck with. Oh, come on now. That was the decision of the board. Right. And it was under your control when that decision was made. That was before we took over. Now, just wait one minute. You wait a minute. What would happen? Mr. Liss, if we all suddenly decided to just stop making any payments. Well, you can't do that. Why not? You'd be evicted, for one thing. We might. But that would mean that somebody didn't mind picking up the legal costs for 200 evictions and 200 empty apartments. Perhaps if Marty and I have more time to look into this, we might come up with some solution. No guarantee, of course. Anything at all to be a help, Mr. Liss? Well, you know I'll try, gentlemen. So now, if there is nothing else, well... But there is. You can call Gulfway Management and tell Sullivan to replace Higby with a manager who's willing to give us the service that we pay for. Someone who's reasonably polite. That clown has antagonized practically everybody in the building. Drew, make a note of that. Well, I can't promise you anything, but, uh, but I'll try. Well, if you'll excuse me, gentlemen, I've run out of time. Well, we'll be in touch, Mr. Liss. Mm -hmm. This way, Mr. Garber. Thank you. That Gus Garber doesn't fool around, does he? An owner's revolt. <laughs> That's all I need. My God, Drew, do you know that the boys in Miami have Gulfway management in one pocket and all those mortgages in another? And if those people stop paying, I'm gonna have to get out of town? Marty, they wouldn't dare. They've got their lives in hock for those apartments. Where are they gonna go? I don't know. I think that what you need is a little loving to take your mind off your problems. <laughs> hmm? You know what I need? I need to fix that Julian Higby, but good. I mean, screwing people is one thing, but getting them angry is just plain stupid. Mm. 
Get Miami on the phone. Right now? Right now. One of these days, Marty Liss, your dedication to greed is going to be the death of me. Well, just as long as it isn't the death of me. Shilling. I found it while I was working on a breakwater down in Australia. I'll bet. No, it was Australia. I remember the job was going south. I mean, you didn't drop it. I've been watching you from back there. What are you, some kind of building inspector or something? No, I'm a guest. Who's? Gus Garr is in 5C. Wait a minute. Hey, you wouldn't have liked Australia. You put your hand where it's not wanted down under, and it'll come back a bloody stump. It's nice talking with you. Hey, Gus. Hey, hey, always in time for lunch, huh? Yeah, that's what I was afraid of. Well, have you know, it takes a lot of engineering skill to build a sandwich like that. There you go. And a lot of guts to eat one like that. Grab a couple of beers. I won't tell you about that meeting. You know, I bet it didn't go all that great, did it? Well, that depends. Liz doesn't want any trouble. You know something? If we've got him convinced that uh, we all might go on strike, I think he's going to do something about it. Maybe. But if he's as shady as I think he is, I don't think he can take too much heat. It's exactly the way I had him figured. You've never met this guy, though. Do you hear something about him? No. But no legit developer would have cut the kind of corners he did when he built this place. Hey, wait a minute. It's not first class, but then nothing is these days. It's not that bad. It's not? You ever take a real good look at it? Well, I haven't seen core samples, if that's what you mean. Well, when you get through stuff in your face, you and I are going to take a little walk. I got a couple of things I'd like to show you. You might overlook them while you were falling in love with the view. Feel that. Feel how sandy that is? The specifications call for Class A concrete. This is a skimpy pour, Gus. Yeah. The cement content in this building is probably four bags per yard instead of six. Look around here. You got surface voids, you got leakage stains, joint marks, fins. You got the works in this building. Look at this. Yeah, stone pockets. Foundation's probably riddled with them. It's shoddy work, but even so, this place probably exceeds the safety specs by at least 20%. Hi, Thelma. Hi, Gus. I want you to meet a friend of mine, Sam Harris. This is Thelma Messenkart. Nice to meet you. Hi. You headed for another trip into your jungle? There's so much to learn about nature. I grew up in New York, and this is a whole new world for me. It's unspoiled, untouched. It's fascinating. Yeah, it must be. Uh, well, I have to go now. Nice meeting you, Mr. Hansen. Nice meeting you, Mrs. Messicott. It's mm. interesting. Yeah, she's a sweet kid. Her husband's a real jock. He's a tennis freak. So she wanders around in there all the time. A tennis jock married to a nature nut. See, things like that, Gus, that's what keeps me single. Well, let's get back to business. When you're a civil engineer, you're guilty of complacency. No contest. What can I tell you? Terry was so in love with her condominium that, well, I just didn't have the heart to say anything against it. Well, I wouldn't feel too bad. You know what they say about doctors being bad patients? I guess engineers can be just as bad. Yeah, I guess, but there's no consolation in it. Well, if you really want to feel bad, there's a lot more I can show you. Come on.
Mr. Ames. I didn't mean to frighten you, but... You did. You shouldn't creep up on people like that. And you shouldn't wander around this place unescorted. There are a lot of crazy people in the world. Perverts, muggers, rapists, just waiting to molest and kill anyone they can. Nonsense. Nobody around here is like that. Now, if you don't mind, I have work to do. So please leave me alone. Well, hello. I thought I heard some voices. I was, uh, just telling Mrs. Mensencott how dangerous it is to be roaming around out here alone. It is? Why? Well, I, uh... In this instance, aren't you being a shade overly cautious, Ames? That's what I said. I'm sorry you don't appreciate my concern for your welfare. All of you. We do, Ames. But I think you're overdoing it. I mean, we're not children. We're perfectly capable of taking care of ourselves. I see. All right. Suit yourselves. Ames. He takes himself so seriously. I think maybe I've upset him. Never mind him. Come see what I found. It's a butterfly orchid. They usually only grow in the Everglades. Oh. Isn't it beautiful? My, that is beautiful. In fact, this whole place is just charming. No one else thinks so. Well, that's their loss. And our secret. Well. Fish are waiting. Enjoy yourself. Bye. Bye. I, I'm sorry, Mrs. Forrester. Mrs. Forrester, Mrs. Forrester, you are not listening to what I am saying. Julian cannot fix the unit without the actual part. No, it's still on back order. Yes, I know exactly how you feel, believe me. Yes, it will be done. It will be done. Right. Right, okay, bye-bye. Vic, Vic, let go of me. Hey, Lori, honey. What kind of friendly greedy is that? Where's your old man? Why would he want with him? Uh, it seems he got a lot of people sword him. Now I gotta teach him some respect. Oh, and figures. I told him he couldn't keep going around acting that way. Do you know Julian? Who does he ever listen to? How bad you gotta hurt him? Oh, no hospital kid. Not like that. Ain't no big thing. <laughs> No way, Lori, honey. Nothing personal. Just taking care of business. What kind of business? Hey! Well, if it isn't Mr. Julian H.B. himself. Hey! You and me, kid, we gotta have a little talk. Hello. should know. I'll bet. Oh, wait a minute. You gotta listen. You gotta listen to me. We talk later. First, we take care of business. What business? You made a lot of the owners real mad at you, and it ain't the first time either. Now, they all went to Mr. Liss, and he got the sully. And now I gotta get to you. And teach you some manners the hard way. Wait a minute. You gotta listen. It's important. Really important. Okay, kid. What is it? There's this guy I saw snooping around the building. Yeah, what guy? Sam Harrison's his name. He's staying with Gus Garver. He's been checking out something to do with the construction. I don't know what he's after, but it can't be too good. He's too damn interested in something. I've seen him okay. twice. I got the message. I'll pass it along. Ain't that worth something? Oh, sure, kid. I'll make it quick.
or next time. Yeah, that's right, Mr. Liss. The kid promises to behave himself. Hey, come on, I'm a pro, remember? You ain't got a mark on him. He's gonna have a little trouble sitting up in the morning. Oh, no, 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 he knows he could have wind up in the hospital, so he ain't complaining. Oh, another thing, and maybe nothing. I figure the kid's trying to borrow time. But he says there's some guy stupid around the condo, checking out construction and things like that. Oh, yeah, a guy named Harrison. Junior says he's staying with a guy named Carver. Yeah. Sure, Mr. Les, sure. Yeah, I'll check it out. As long as I'm there, I'll check it out real good. You do that, Vic.